Hello everybody and welcome back to Chapter Tactics where we go over tactics and strategies to help out both new and veteran players alike. I am your host, Magic Garbusefly, also known as Matt, and with me today we have our regular co-host here, Demeki. Let me show you something! Oh, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And we have John P. I want to see what you're showing me. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are talking about uh, not just space wolves, but mostly talking about like uh, what it's like having an army and punching upwards uh, against what's the big boogeyman. So even if you don't play space wolves, you're still going to learn a lot of stuff on ways to change your mindset on how to play the game um, because the game is completely different than what it was at the starting of this year. So... Uh, we're going to be taking a look at all that stuff, but before we do that, this show is brought to you by FrontlineGaming.org, where you can get amazing game mats for not just your 40k games, but almost any tabletop game out there. Purchase miniatures at a discount and join some of the largest 40k events in the industry. They also have the largest 40k podcasting network in the business with shows like Signals from the Frontline, Chapter Tactics, 40K Game Changers, 40K Stat Center, Grim After Dark, and so much more. That is FrontlineGaming.org. And, by the way, you guys can also pick up tickets for the SoCal Open. So, go get those because we'll be there. And if you want to flex yourself, flex the armies that have come out this year, the stuff that you've been painting all year, you want to go to a tournament and you're just like, no LGS is for me, I'm going straight for the big leagues, go pick up a SoCal Ticket Open. And uh, come join the madness over there also. Uh, the Las Vegas uh, team tournament is coming up very soon. So uh, good luck to everybody that is joining that. Uh, Demeki, you're going to be joining that, right? Hell yeah. yeah including our very <laughs> yeah, own Demeki. Brother. Yeah. I'm super excited. Wait, wait, what are you taking again? Drukari. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's your list? Uh, nine Kronos. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so, so you went from facing Nine Kronos in a team tournament to playing Nine Kronos in a team tournament. <laughs> C. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I like to hear. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Why? Why the switch over to the uh, nine Kronos? Well, I mean, I already, I already knew I was going to switch over uh, during the league. Yeah. To Drakari, um, and that nine Kronos list was so disgusting that I was just like, mm, it's, "It's pretty good. Yeah. It's very <laughs> spicy. I like this." And uh, so I was like, "You know what? Why not? I'll give it. I'll give it a shot." D mm. Dark Technomancer go. Brrr, <laughs> so you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty fun though. It is. It's pretty fun. What are you guys taking for the SoCal Open? Let know me know yet. all of your game plans, so then that way yeah, we can yeah. tell everybody, yeah, so yeah, then they yeah, can just yeah. stomp you guys into the yeah, ground. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm playing Imperial Guard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was kidding. I'm um, playing Chaos Knights. <laughs> <laughs> only Bane Blades. Yeah, oh, um, dude, four Bane Blades. Four Bane Blades. Let's all play four Bane no Blades. No CP. <laughs> I'm bringing a Warhound Titan. Uh, <laughs> I'm playing Toby. Yeah. <laughs> all right, here's yeah. my Warhound Titan. Yeah. <laughs> This so, says I win. <laughs> which one? What, what are you guys taking? Yeah, dude, I have I have not hobbied in like over a month, um, and because of that, I'm probably not going to be bringing Admech. I'm going to be bringing Space Wolves. Mm -hmm. It's a more complete army, uh, more battle ready for tournament standards. So, yeah, Space Wolves. Here we go. Yep. And then what about you? I, I can't make up my mind between Death Guard or I can't make up my mind between Death Guard, Jakari, Tau, <laughs> Dark Angels, not Tau. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna play Tau now, actually. Yeah. You gonna play Tau, dude? Yeah, yeah, I'll play Tau. I'll play. You gonna play Tau? I'll play Tau. Maybe if I, dude, Tau Nar Supremacy Armor. <laughs> mm. mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so, um, <laughs> without further ado, I think that uh, we can get into um, this topic real quick. So, a lot of armies have to punch upwards at the big boogeyman of 40k. Things like Drakari. Iron Hands, Death Watch, Sisters, Orcs, Admech. Lord of uh, Skulls. Lord of Skulls. <laughs> uh, wh what else is a big one? Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Death Guard. Yeah, you didn't Death say Death Guard. Yes. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of them. Harlequin still. Harlequin's yeah. with like souping with Craft Worlds is now like extremely strong. Maybe Grey Knights now. Grey Knights. Mm. Um, maybe K Suns. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's out there. Sisters, I, re I think I already said sisters. But, yeah, there's so much out there that you have to punch upwards on. Um, how are older, quote-unquote, Codex Crept armies dealing with these factions? Today we're taking a look at Space Wolves and how they interact with the hotness. And we all have, like, 8th edition armies mm -hmm. and uh, Codex Crept armies, quote-unquote, except for me, I don't have any Codex Crept armies. 
Um, you have your first ninth edition. I do have my first ninth edition mm-hmm. army, and Oof. I I am loving it. It yeah. is amazing. <laughs> I get to play with you guys. <laughs> up to date. Yeah, yeah, up to date. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Come on, this FAQ it's it actually helps me. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So yeah. So we're just gonna be talking about um how older armies punch upwards because like even Death Guard. Yeah. Like they came out a while ago. Yeah. Um. And they're they're still finishing like in the top fifty percent of uh of games you know they yeah. they have an above 50 percent win rate as of right now it's, so. it's it's not necessarily that they're punching upward they're just moving super slow yeah <laughs> it's, it's, it's an ox- it, yeah. It, yeah very lore accurate yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the inexorable advance right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay and then uh <laughs> and then like even with the uh, stuff that are eighth edition armies they always have to punch upwards mm-hmm. but i think that the biggest reason as to why a lot of stuff where people are saying like codex creep and things like that um, is uh, uh, where, where it's not as relevant anymore is because the game has changed from the beginning of this year mm-hmm. to now where it's just extremely, extremely more cagey. If mm-hmm. you look at things like um, uh, the recent uh, open that happened, right? The one with uh, Art of War and um, I think it was like New Orleans or something. I forgot what it was. Oh, no, or, no. Or, You're talking Orlando about Orlando. Open. Yeah, the yeah, Orlando, Orlando, Orlando GT. Yeah, the Orlando GT. It was, uh, the final game was between uh, Lennon mm-hmm. and Siegler. John Lennon and Richard Siegler, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lennon was uh, piloting Sisters mm-hmm. and Siegler was piloting Admech. Yep. And that entire game, when I was looking over it, not a lot of units died. Nope. Mm-hmm. Right, it was like very tradey, very cagey. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the point of the game as of right now is what what units can really play or what armies can really play cagey. And if you could play cagey, then you're totally fine. You're looking at things because of uh, secondaries like stranglehold. Yep, yep. Things that you can do on your own turn where it doesn't matter what your opponent is doing. Right. Obviously, there are armies that score secondaries a lot better. Jukari. Right mm-hmm. with herd the prey, yeah, um, free fifteen or like to the last, yeah, with Kronos, yep, yeah. Come on, you know, fucking yeah, dude. <laughs> <Whoops>. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean to say that curse word. Yeah. He said beep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah but like Beeping. even with your Kronos, you yeah, know, you're taking to the last with that, right? Yeah, and that's yeah. like the kind of norm that Jakari has started to go into. Yeah, because it's like I mean, it's twenty, it's twenty one wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, for, per 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 unit, right? So mm-hmm. like because their units are three, so then you got a five up, feel no pain. And then their T6, and if Homunculus is nearby, their T7. You know, if Homunculus also has Master Regenesis, well, then instead of D3 wounds, he's getting back, you're getting a back flat three. So they're, like, even more probably a pain in the butt to kill mm-hmm. uh, than Mortarian. Yeah. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I feel <laughs> bad for, for, for like, Space Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> hey, excuse me. Hey, well, I mean, like, you know. Don't patronize me. I'm not patronizing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, so with the KG meta, yeah. right? Yeah. I know that a lot of people, when they see Space Wolves, are like, oh, they have to get into combat now. Yeah. Right? They got to they gotta go. They got to alpha strike turn one. <laughs> they got to do all these kinds of crazy shenanigans yeah. to try and get into the first turn charge or just get into melee combat and kill stuff. But that's not the meta anymore. We, we, we're not working yeah. with the killing meta. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's kind of like a misconception, too, of Space Wolves. Like, you think Space Wolves, you got, you know, like you said, go go hard mm-hmm. or, or live fast, die hard. Uga-booga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Uga Booga. Uga Booga, your way in. But it's like, you got, they they have a lot of, I guess, ways to pick their own fights. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. want to fight smartly. You want to fight in a way that, you know, you have the advantage, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pick your pick your own fights kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're still playing KG. You're a counter, yeah. you're a counter charge army. Yeah, right? they're a counter charge army, especially by heart. Um, mm-hmm. They're able to, especially play in this meta where you can just send out something like a cyber wolf. <laughs> send it yeah. out to the objective. It'll cap you points for stranglehold if you get turn one. Or maybe you could sneak it in uh, to the center and get points for, oh, it's turn two. Um but yeah, they they play pretty decently in this meta. Um, you can you're able to swing upwards against like those boogeyman armies, like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, you probably have to use a lot more brain capacity than than, than, <laughs> than, the, than yeah, the other yeah. army. But yeah. yeah, it's they could definitely hang. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like I think that we saw that at the Orlando Open, yeah. right? Like even Blood Angels were able to hang. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, a, a faction that's considered to be like you know. Uh, not that great anymore. Power crept. Yeah, um, uh, I think recently on 40kstats.com, they have like a 38% win rate or something right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, 
uh, poo poo. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not very good. Yeah. But what, what, what's their what's their chapter thing? It's it's plus one to wound. Yeah, plus one to wound in the first round of combat, and then they get plus one advance and charge. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 They have ways to get around it and yeah. stuff like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Um, but like like what I was saying was with the more cagey armies that you're or the more cagey meta that we're seeing is that armies that uh, are kind of quote unquote bad mm-hmm. are becoming more and more prevalent uh, yeah. because they're able to trade well or you know mm-hmm. as long as you can trade one unit with another unit to get st- something like stranglehold off yeah. then it's worth it exactly. then you can you can punch upwards as much as you want mm-hmm. it, it becomes a game of chicken like you're yeah. right i'm gonna send this unit out you're gonna kill it okay now you're gonna send that unit out i'm gonna kill it and it, you just it's like you're working your way up to like the big boss at the at, and like round yeah. four round five like all right here's my big boy unit can you kill it <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. no yeah yeah, exactly. And it's like, uh, it's the same thing with like a uh, second turn, right? It makes second turn way, way more valuable, especially if you're playing like a more cagey meta. Because now when you have second turn, you're putting the first turn person on the back foot. Right. Which yeah. is so like backwards now, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because they have to, you know, if they're playing cagey also and you're playing cagey, well, guess what? At turn turn 15 or turn 15 turn, turn 15. 5 turn Whoa. 5 you're getting 15 points right if you have the is speed. this boxing now yeah 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 <laughs> 15. yeah but like you know you saw it in the Orlando game as well when it was uh Lennon versus Siegler yeah. where Lennon was on the back foot even though he got first turn he was on the back foot the whole game because he didn't have second turn on a map that uh, mm-hmm. uh um Siegler was able to like run rampant on with just capping objectives and just trading all the time yeah it it's you're kind of forced to have to kill the army that goes second. You're kind of forced to have to make those actions. Otherwise, if you just both sit back and play KG, it super favors um, turn two. Yeah. Um, because they can just, yeah, like you mentioned, um, walk on all the objectives. They need to be kill what they need to kill on the end of turn five and, you know, just get all those points. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, yeah easy super points. easy. Mm-hmm. 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 I messed up recently. I did the Ooga Booga on turn two yeah, during my last never, match. You never yeah. do it. And yeah, no, I did too. I did uh, yeah. I Ooga Booga turn one. <laughs> I, I Ooga Booga on, on turn two because I was like, I'm Drakari Ooga Booga. Yeah, and yeah. Then, uh, yeah, it didn't go so well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's surprising because like even though Drakari has a very very strong uh, shooting power and yeah, killing yeah. power, yeah, they still play very cagey, especially like turns one, two, and three. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's like you have that thing in your back pocket, which is fight last. Yeah. <laughs> the fight last incubi. And you're like, yeah, come at me, dude. I have this. Yeah. You can't kill this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good luck. Yeah. Good luck. I'm going to trade one unit for two of yours. Yeah. So uh, I think I wouldn't. Yeah. Let me, let me just come over and touch you real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the reason why we're talking about this KG meta in the first place is because that's the meta that we're in, right? Right. And because we're inside this KG meta, a lot of armies are able to punch upwards, mm-hmm. um, so to say, right? And I think that Space Wolves is one of them that can uh, punch upwards decently enough. So I kind of want to unpack what's going on with Space Wolves and how they interact with this more KG meta. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like, so, and for I guess like as a blanket, how do you um, counter the top armies like your Jakaris, your Add mechs, all that stuff. Yeah, I think the thing is with Space Wolves, like they, one of their biggest strengths is the ability to take a single Cyber Wolf, <laughs> uh, which is only 15 points. 15 points, T4, two wounds, uh, moves 10 inches, can advance and charge, mm-hmm. um, and saves on fours. Uh, that's, fi- that's a 15 point unit right there. And you just run that onto the objective, and whatever your opponent sends out to kill it, it's gonna be, it's gonna cost more than it. So, you're making them trade down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, at, at, from the very get-go. And then from there, you know, you're know, you able to evaluate what they sent out and send out something that you know can kill it. And maybe you're trading up, maybe you're trading down, but whatever you send out it has to kill it. And yeah. uh, Space Wolves definitely have the ability to kill anything um, with countercharge. Uh, I mean, um, you know, um, knowing what they are able to fight. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're bringing, you're still bringing stuff like um, Wolf Guard. Yeah, um, you're bringing things like. Uh, do, do you still bring Vanguard bets with Space Wolves? Is that still uh, that is Wolf Guard? Wolf Guard is oh, the, the, the Space Wolf variant of okay. Van- oh, okay, Vanguard okay. bets. Yeah, yeah. So you're still bringing Wolf Guard, so they have the 12 inch move and a 12 inch move. Uh, if you're playing for mid board, that's more than enough to get you on an objective and exactly. do a, a good counter punch. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and you you just want to uh, like just like what Richard Siegler is doing in his match. You you. You just kind of want to keep your big blob just right behind that big 
uh, terrain, obscuring terrain, mm -hmm. um, just ready to go, um, yeah. ready for action. Yeah, trying to make sure that you're not getting angled on. Yeah, right? just, yeah, trying to make sure you're not getting angled on. Um, in addition to that, they have like the utility to be able to, I guess, make pick, put the fight in their favor. Yeah, um, things like fight last, things like um, increasing their cover save, things like um, p getting put into the right uh, doctrine to, in mm -hmm. order to gain more from their combat, getting just more and more efficiency out of it. Like um, the biggest thing with spatial is that. Um, when you fight in melee, you get a plus one to hit. <laughs> um, so you're hitting on twos instead of threes with your entire army. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Especially, uh, like, you can add rerolls onto that if you yeah. really need to, yeah. but it's not necessary. Um, I think, like, the only reason why you add rerolls is for something like the successor chapter to for exploding sixes, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and you're going to see, essentially everyone <laughs> uh, running the successor chapter nowadays because the I guess the Space Wolves base chapter tactic or the actual chapter tactic is you get the plus one to hit in the first round of combat and then you get uh, army-wide three-inch heroic intervention. Uh, the army-wide three-inch heroic intervention isn't uh, so good against players that kind of know how to work around it. Yeah. Because, you know, three inches is not that... Not super uh, impactful. Um, so you say that to my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. Yeah, something, <laughs> something, yeah. Three inches can make an impact. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's why we call you the three-inch thriller, thriller, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, anyways, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, nowadays everyone's going to be running uh, Born Heroes, which is the plus one um, on, on the charge, and then Whirlwind of Rage, which is uh, an exploding six in um, for hitting in yeah. melee. Uh, on top of that, you the Space Wolves Super Doctrine also gives you a, an additional Exploding Six in the Assault Doctrine. Um, so every six you roll to hit uh, is going to count as three hits. <laughs> and you consider something like, I don't know, maybe Redemptor Dreadnought. Yes. Yeah. Uh, fishing for sixes or maybe a, a full unit of Wolf Guard. Fishing for sixes, you, it, can, it can add up. You can, it, a five-man unit of Wolf Guard could probably take down a knight. <laughs> um Ooh. If you with, fish with, for the sixes, yeah, yeah. With, with with all you know all the proper rules, like yeah. if you use uh, keen senses to ignore in the hit modifiers, um, if for you your thunder hammers, yeah, for your thunder hammers that we were hitting on thunder hammers with twos, um, you can use the chapter master rerolls, or you can use the chaplain um, rerolls, or to fish, yeah, to fish for sixes, um, because you're hitting on twos and your sixes count as three hits, you reroll anything that's not six because you just want you know those three hits, just yeah. fish from, yeah, yeah, just fish from, and then like if you need to, you can. Use Savage Strike to plus one to your wound roll. Um, so you could be winning on twos or threes. Um, considering it's a Thunder Hammer, it's probably going to be winning on at least twos or threes already. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's you, yeah, that a five man unit Wolf Guard with Thunder Hammers can definitely trade upwards. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, most um, definitely. And then also that, like, a lot of people are obviously are running the Wolf Guard with Lightning Claws nowadays. Um, Lightning Claws, Storm Shield. Um, mm -hmm. with your tap with the chapter mastery rules, fishing for sixes, you can rack up a lot of hits. Um, and then with lightning claws, they're built in. We roll the wound roll, so you're gonna be getting a lot of efficiency out of like an 140 point model. Yeah, or 140 point unit. Sorry. Yeah, you know that's kind of um that that's like you, you at that point you're basically as efficient as what uh Grey Knight strikes are. Yeah, right? the strike definitely. squads. Yeah, because you have um like obviously you don't have a strength six weapon, right? Um, but what you do have is lightning claws with rerolling wound rolls. It still makes you incredibly efficient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and rerolling the wound roll, um, I, I think it increases the amount of wounds by like 1.5%. Oh, 1. 150% or something. They increases your wounds by 50%. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which is ridiculous. Yeah. That's yeah. really Any, good. Anytime when someone's like, all right, I'm rerolling the hit, I'm just like, eh. But yeah. when they go, I'm rerolling the wound, I'm like, Oh. 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 oh, oh, no. How much Butt AP? Hole how, much, a yeah. Bit. Yeah. how much AP is it? Oh, oh. oh. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, what damage? doctrine are you in? <laughs> oh. oh, how much damage? One. Oh, I'm playing Death Guard. <laughs> <laughs> what um, what would what would you say as of like right now is like necessary units like librarians? Any anything that's essential for like building a list right now f to to play Space Wolves. Yeah, so there, there's going to be three or four characters you're going to see. Um, arguably, uh, a, lot, a lot of people consider the librarian to be like the linchpin unit. Um, mm -hmm. Some people say otherwise nowadays because you're giving up a board of the witch or armies like um, Thousand Suns, Grey Knights, and then you're also giving them their free second, or you're, you're also giving Thousand Suns their free secondary. Cause they're yeah, going to be for Magnus. Yeah. For yeah. The, the Magnus one, whatever it's called. 
Um, but librarian provides a lot of utility uh, from the Tempestus discipline. You get um, you can put a unit into the Assault Doctrine early. Pretty cool. Uh, Murder's Hurricane is the fight last turn off Overwatch one. Mm-hmm. And then you can also do Stormcaller to give a little bubble of plus one to cover save. Uh, so put your Wolf Guard in um, with their Storm Shields. They're saving on a one. Uh, Redemptor is saving on a two. Uh, so stuff like that. That's yeah, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. And, and then the you, you have the um, the psychic power for fight last, and then you, don't you also have a relic for fight last as well? Yeah. So you usually also give him the armor of Russ, uh, mm-hmm. which uh, is gives him a two up save, a four up invuln, and then if he's in engagement range or something, he can pick that unit to fight last. Um, it's kind of like a way to brute force the fight last. If for some reason your psychic spell didn't go off, like you have that backup option with it, and then. This librarian will probably have a jump pack also. Mm-hmm. Um, move twelve inches, just charge in. He'll he'll be anywhere. He he'll be wherever you want him to be. Mm-hmm. D- does uh, Hurricane's fight last? Does it last until your next psychic phase? Yes. Uh, let me double check that. Yes, until the start of your next psychic <laughs> phase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so essentially, what you're doing is that you're making it so then people because like uh, against armies that don't have fight last, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or don't have access to fight last, and there's a lot of armies that don't have access to that type of stuff, what you're essentially doing is making it so then their only real counter to a fight last is to send in two units. Yeah, you're making them... You you force them to make a trade-off. Like, okay, I guess I have to get rid of this unit in order to kill that unit. Or you have to get rid of these two units in order to kill that one unit. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, 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 you're putting your p- opponent in a, on their back foot, um, forcing them to make a, a bad trade-off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the, the one of the bigger things about Murder's Hurricane is that uh, it's 18 inches. You don't need a vision. So you oh, just, cool. Yeah, you good, just good. keep your librarian just hidden behind the terrain. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And then you just got, you know... Uh, uh, you just, just got to roll, roll that yeah, yeah, six yeah. for the warp charge. Hopefully yeah. you don't deny it. If not, then... Uh, yeah, just re-roll it. It's yeah, fine. Just re-roll yeah. it. CP re-roll it. If yeah. not, uh, I guess you just send your librarian to his death. <laughs> <laughs> Perils um, of the warp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah. What, a, what about OBSEC, though? Because, like, Space Marines have a plethora of OPSEC to choose from, but it kind of feels like the, the the most bang for your buck is, like, Infiltrators, right? Because yeah. they, the, they got the deny. Yeah, well, they have the 12-inch deny, but mm-hmm. you're paying a premium right. for, for Infiltrators because uh, you want the Helix Gauntlet also mm-hmm. uh, in order to ignore that first failed save roll. Yep. Um, so 130 points for, a OPSEC, uh, for an OPSEC unit is... Big price to pay. Uh, yeah. A lot of people kind of just opt for incursors. Uh, much cheaper, 105 points. Uh, they don't have all the cool stuff that infiltrators do, but that's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you mm-hmm. could transient with them. You could smoke screen them. Um, OPSEC obviously is pretty important, but you can take rights of war on like another character and give off OPSEC to maybe your Wolf Guard, Playguard Vets, yeah. Redemptors. Yeah, exactly. Th- there's yeah. a lot of way. I, 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 oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, please continue. Oh, no, 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 that was it. Oh, okay. Um, So, like, OPSEC is important in this game, obviously, because, you know, OPSEC, yes. you know, you, you hold yeah. an objective. Yeah, mm-hmm. objective secured. Yeah, <laughs> but the thing is, is that when, in this type of KG meta, right, when you're trading units anyways all the time, OPSEC really, really doesn't matter that much, yeah. right? And especially if you have something like what uh, your... Uh, um, give a unit OPSEC. Yeah, rights of war. <laughs> yeah, you have rights of war. So, like, it doesn't really matter too much because then, you know, all you have to do is just stay on, like, three objectives and then yeah. just send something out and then they'll have OPSEC. But most importantly, because Space Wolves are so efficient with their units that whenever you bring a unit up to the midboard to uh, fight for an objective, they're going to clear it. Yeah, most more than likely they're going to they're gonna clear it unless you're fighting, like, that trout sherm is or something. Yeah, with, yeah, with, yeah, with yeah, 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 or incubage. Welcome, yeah, yeah. welcome to fight last, fight last. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yours is way more fight last. Than my fight last. Yours is like, do not charge. My, they should just rename it to no, no, yeah, you, no. I fight. Yeah, yeah. you cannot you fight not me fight, at all. I fight. Oh, I didn't kill you. Oops. <laughs> so, so uh, that 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 brings up a good point. How do you deal with? Uh, units that do have that fight last, like something like Stench Vats, where you can't really get into melee without trading uh, down significantly. Uh, 
<laughs> I don't know actually. You you are like it's, if if anyone does know, please tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Stench rats is is a uh, is a very strong thing to deal with. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, isn't isn't that also why people are starting to experiment bringing back snipers and stuff to try to snipe characters? Because like yeah, but it's not yeah, really but, reliable. Yeah, yeah, but but the thing with uh, the of foul black spawn, that's what he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The that's how determinants have the bodyguard rule and the bodyguard. That's rule. true. I forgot yeah. about that. Bodyguard rule very they strong. You have yeah. the bodyguard rule, <laughs> so it don't matter. Yeah, it don't matter. Oh, it's you a you hit doesn't him. Doesn't mean anything. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna take on, this for you. Save it on yeah. two. <laughs> <laughs> save your protocol. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, when dealing with fight last, you you have to trade down. Yeah. Um, even even when you have double fight last, like, sense fast is like the only one mm. where it's. It, it, it's uh it hurts you specifically yeah more so right exactly yeah you kind of you kind of just have to run like a, just a quick analysis in your head like what well, am i okay with losing right now yeah. <laughs> and that's that's those are the two things you send in you know the saying do, is the lemon worth the squeeze yeah, yeah. Do, do you, does it still bring um do space will still bring things like redemptors with plasmas or um do they bring the Infamous <laughs> twin Volkites, twin Volkites. <laughs> contemptors. <laughs> of, yes, of course. Uh, I mean, like it, with most Space Wolves lists, um, unfortunately, the Space Wolves' unique units, Thunderwolf, Cav, and Wolfen, are, are not, not good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially in this meta. Um, well, they're, they're, Thunderwolf Cav are okay. They're okay, but yeah, then they're decent. Is yeah. it is it just that they're overcosted? Is that one? Uh, of they're the very problems? expensive. They cannot breach through terrain. Oh there's, yeah, that's there's a, a lot of terrain. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. um, they're four wounds. Uh, so D three plus three bad against them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, or sorry, good for the other person. Um, and you consider like chickens. They're like burst crawlers, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. the dark lands. Yeah, dark, dark lands. You could throw in a demon Karen here yeah. and there. <laughs> oh, so, that's a D three plus three. Yeah, D three plus three, yeah. pretty good. <laughs> Minimum four damage. <laughs> well, how many points is a uh, five uh, Thunderwolf calf? Uh, depending how you kick them out, it'll vary from two fifty to three hundred points. Ooh. So, so that's like two wolf guards. Yeah, that's yeah. two squads of wolf guards. You yeah, or like, like six DSTs. Yeah, yeah not or like, worse. Uh, <laughs> or like a Redemptor and a Volkite Condemptor. Yeah, <laughs> but. Like, I can see maybe bringing three. Yeah, maybe. If you just, if you want to play in that style where you kind of just go ooga booga, just run maybe some Thunderwolf Cab up first, pin your opponent down, and then mm -hmm. just have your guys in the back trying to score objectives. Yeah. You could do that. Um, That's like a Hail Mary play. Yeah, there is a Hail Mary <laughs> play. If, if it, it's more, uh, if things go wrong for you, maybe you roll a little more ones here and there than you should have. Mm -hmm. uh, things could go poorly. It's not as reliable, as yeah, I guess yeah. is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so you're basically going for that efficiency out of like the wolf guard because yeah. how much is a squad of wolf guard for a, a five man MSU? Uh, with claws and shields, it'll go around 140. 140? Yeah, all That's hammers. Really uh, all hammers will be like 185, but you That's can still pretty cheap. Yeah, you consider all hammers. Uh, it could take out. It's, it definitely swings upwards. Yeah, that's like your. Yeah, that, that that that's your your pocket unit when yeah. you're going up against like the Night Majera. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's actually like, oh, that thing. Okay. Yeah. You, you guys, you, you you see that? That's what uh, you're killing. That's what you're killing. <laughs> yeah, what you're We're gonna killing. stay you, here yeah. until they come yeah, up. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that that definitely makes sense. I mean, like 140 points for an MSU, especially when we're in a meta where MSU is huge. Yeah, mm -hmm. MSU is the name of the game. Yeah, if you can have an MSU squad that can trade with another MSU squad, you're fine. You don't have to like keep overkilling. You don't need to bring 10 of something yeah. if it can just kill an MSU, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh but yeah, um like uh, like I mentioned, you're going to see a lot of the same stuff you'll see in other Space Marines lists. You're going to see maybe Redemptors, uh, Volkite Contemptors, mm -hmm. Wolf Guards, um Devastators or the Space Wolves ones called they're called Long Fangs. Yeah. Um Blade Guard Vets. Uh people might Ooh. even start bringing Eliminators. Uh they're pretty cheap, 75 points. You could use them in the screen. <laughs> um you can also use uh was it called guerrilla tactics to um, put them in reserves and bring them back if for some reason you if uh, or if you took uh, retrieve Octarius data yeah. get that last quadrant oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that's pretty good and then, uh, obviously cyberwolves probably one of the better units in this codex yeah. you is said it, 15 points yeah, right 15 points oh, moves 10 so inches good. i yeah. would love that yeah. is what you're telling me the day of the eradicator over uh, i mean some people still take eradicators but <laughs> why take an eradicator unit when you can take a four man squad or a five man squad devastators, uh, four multi meltas, and put them in a drop pod 
Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, get, get right in your opponent's face <laughs> and force them to react to that while the rest of your army is, like, scoring points for you. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the thing. That's that, that's kind of, like, what was happening in the beginning of the year, right? Eradicators yeah. were great because they killed stuff, yep. you know, more killy. Yeah. But now we've gotten to the point where the game is very cagey. And so, like, eradicators still do their job if you need to, like, melt something with their melt a gun, yeah. I guess. But, like... Is it going to win you the game off of bringing these eradicators, which are now how many points is a three man squad of eradicators with like, a multi melta? I think like one fifty something. Yeah, yeah. That's that. That's just another yeah. Wolfguard squad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude. More. <laughs> more hey, nothing made nothing made anybody sweat more though a year ago than seeing like three eradicators and then they're like, yeah, all right, yeah. I'm putting them into just stri- yeah. strategic, strategic reserves. reserves. <laughs> dude, you know what we should do for another for an episode of Chapter Tactics? We should go over the units that were hot in the beginning on our garbage or that people don't use anymore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Outriders, eradicators. Outriders, <laughs> eradicators. <laughs> that's funny. That'd be fun. Yeah, Mortarian. Well, would. Yeah, Morty. <laughs> <laughs> Mortarian. Mortarian. He's okay. Mm, he's he's, good. he's, he's, he's good. fine. He's fine. <laughs> um, we, we can always talk about Magnus. <laughs> Dude, off. don't make me sad, man. <laughs> Dude, bro. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I love... All right. Hey, what are some... <laughs> where, do you, where do you learn about, like, different lists? Is it just off of Discord and stuff? Yeah, uh, I'm in a Discord server um, run by one of the Goonhammer authors, John K. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's plays a very um, board control kind of style. He runs impulsors mm-hmm. uh, with blade guard vets everywhere. Just very melee centric. Um, likes to move block and stuff. So I learn. I get a lot of insight from him. He also writes a lot of. <coughs> excuse me. He also writes a lot of like um, start competing articles, um, and he puts a lot of like effort into them. Um, a lot of. Uh, good analysis and breakdown so mm-hmm. um every every now and then there'll be a space wolf list so a little from there um there's a guy that goes by the name of uh jaime paris he kind of uh i don't know if he was the first one but he popularized the chapter master build with the the dual lightning claws the dual mm-hmm. lightning frost claws with um the hunter imperium sword so it's a strength six chapter master with a plus one advanced charge rule charge rolls and if it charges um something it activates that saga of the hunter oh, which, okay yeah which, yeah which activates the the aura to for advance and charge mm-hmm. so um just imagining a wolf guard unit with advance and charge there it can be anywhere yeah, <laughs> um, yeah um but yeah he i think he's featured on a youtube channel i don't the name escapes me but if you look up just the name Jaime paris space wolves <laughs> you'll probably find it <laughs> yeah. um him talking about space wolves on there um yeah so him um and then there's also goon hammer obviously and then also just checking out 40k stats every now and then uh, for like seeing, seeing what's yeah. good. Yeah. Seeing what's good. You know, the one Space Wolves list that finishes top four yeah. once a month. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 August, yeah. they got two. Yeah, they got two. Yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. if I don't hit control F and just go straight to Space Wolves, if I actually scroll manually, my my first first things first, my thumb gets or my finger gets kind of tired, <laughs> um, and then I have to pass by Drakari and just see like, oh, um, the, like the just see like wins. yeah the thirty top fours that they get every month. I don't hate myself. <laughs> A sixty five percent win rate, bro. Oh my goodness. I never I never would have thought in November of last year when I sent that army off, and when I got them back. That for a first commission, be, yeah, that they yeah. would be where they are now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty funny, but I mean, I'm I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a cool army. Oh yeah, most definitely, it really it really is. Uh, okay, so you get it off of things like Discord. You get it off of thing, you know, just like talking around. What's what's the like the standard Space Wolves list as of right now, and like how does it function? Yeah, so I think standard Space Wolves list, you're obviously going to see the the counter charge army, um, just. Um, you can see if maybe a few cyber wolves. You'll see obviously the chapter master I just mentioned. Uh, if people wanna stay away from um, giving up a board or not taking a board of the witch, I guess against the psychic armies, they'll give up the librarian. Maybe take a chaplain instead. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people like to give their chaplain the benediction of fury relic. Um, so he, he has a three damage weapon. Yeah. Just squeeze. Every ounce of efficiency from that, that you possibly <laughs> that you can, possibly can yeah. because you kind of need to. <laughs> yeah. um, and then with the chaplain, um, you'll, I guess your litanies will vary. Uh, obviously, you have the reroll hit rolls one already built in. Um, you have to take that one. Mm-hmm. Um, some people will take maybe recitation of focus uh, for the plus one to hit. Um, give that to your dreadnoughts. You're that. You'll take the plus two charge. I, I think you're gonna see less of those nowadays. Um, some people will probably take maybe the five of final pain against mortals. Mm-hmm. Considering morals is becoming 
much much more prevalent nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So let it. So chapter master, maybe a librarian here and there, chaplain on bike. Um. If there's a list that leans heavily into dread knights, you can see the tech marine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Primaris tech marine gives a plus one to hit um, to, to dreadnoughts. Yeah, yeah, it gives a plus one to hit to vehicles. Um, dreadnoughts. Um, yep. and then it also heals for three wounds. So let's keep those boys healthy while they're uh, shooting some, some things. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then from there, you're probably gonna see. We'll just skip over troops for now. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> for troops, for troops, you're gonna. Tr- it's it, more like a tax. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like it a tax. Like you, you people just take like the cheapest troops they can. Yeah, um, put them on a the back line. Yeah, put them on the back. <laughs> Ideally, you want uh, probably in cursors just because they can take the transhuman. Yeah, and they can smoke screen, so get mm-hmm. that minus one to hit. Um, but some people will just 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 pay less. Maybe take uh, intercessor squad. Maybe take a blood claw squad because those are only ninety points. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do they have opsec? They do have opsec. Oh, but if you're running uh, <laughs> if you're running successor chapter, they don't get that extra attack. And then oh, they're also okay. not primaris, so they don't get right. um, transhuman. Yeah, but who cares? Right. They're yeah. just holding a back line. Yeah, they're <laughs> they're just there. you just guys just sit here. Yeah, it's like, get, can you do you have? Can you get servitors? You can't take servitors. Yeah, dude, just bring servitors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah but I could bring a dog. That's yeah, true. that's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. well, the thing is, is that a dog? It's hard for a dog to hold an objective on a back line because you want them up forward uh, trading. Uh, or, having your opponent trained down, engage. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess it depends. You can. The, well, the dog has uh, the dog has a lot of uses. Yeah. <laughs> the, I'm tell- it's a good I'm boy. T- servitors are going to be the MVP <laughs> soon. I, I, I swear, dude. Yeah. <laughs> they could be. Yeah, yeah. they could take a multi melter. Yeah, they could take yeah. a multi melter, yeah. man. It'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so they, funny. They hit on fours. It's fine when they're next to tech marine. It's okay. What are they tau? <laughs> 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 okay. Uh. <laughs> I think I think the one thing you have over. Um, taking a dog over a servitor is that you can make your opponent guilty for killing a dog. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I remember. I, I know, I'll never forget. <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget. So the dogs move 10 inches, right? Yeah, move okay. 10 inches, That's can advance good. and charge. That's uh, pretty good so for 15 points. At least 11 inches yeah. Yeah. since you're going to advance probably. But That's yeah. pretty good. And then it's so small that it could just hide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It could definitely just toe on the objective. Just yeah. put his little tongue... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a lick, li- lick in the grass. It's a little bit bigger than um, Ripper Swarm, like the base one that uh, GW gives you. Ah, but yeah. it's small. Mm-hmm. I think it might be smaller than Nerglings. Yeah, it might be. I, I think I think they might be smaller than Nerglings, Nerglings but they're tall. wider. Yeah, they are wider <laughs> because they, they have a tail. Yeah, mm-hmm. they do have a tail. Or you could, I mean, you could just find the the just. You know, make it make it look like it's trying to pounce. So like, yeah, yeah. it's like <laughs> it's like just loafed on the ground, <laughs> make it short as possible. Flat Friday, flat Friday. Yeah. Okay. What did what did, uh, what did you think about using the whirlwind, the Forge World War, whirlwind with your recent list? Yeah, uh, I played that recently against Grey Knights. It it was okay. Uh, very expensive. Uh, I think those go for one seventy five. Yeah. Um, that's just Wolfguard. Yeah, it's, it's just another Wolfguard. <laughs> I could have taken the Redemptor. Yeah. Um. It, I the thing I looked over when I took it is that they weren't core. <laughs> yeah, so oh. that was a that was oh. a, a big oops on my part. But if they if those things were core, they'd be a lot more efficient. Obviously, you get the full rerolls. You yeah, could, you can get the plus one to hit from um, the chaplain. But mm-hmm. uh, they do they do what artillery do <laughs> in yeah. this edition. They, you know, they they, they, just, they kill things. They kill a unit. Yeah, but it, they're trading down. It's like three hundred points. Yeah, because you need to take at least two of them or for it to. The, yeah, yeah for it to pay off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and well, uh, you have to take two of them for them for it to pay off, and then yeah. also you have to uh, be on not the scouring. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> scouring. Scouring. Yeah. Uh, mm. how, how many attacks does Wolfguard get? Wolfguard gets do, 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 three they, times they five, sixteen. Three times five plus one for the uh, for the, the sergeant or the pack leader. So sixteen. So sixteen. Sixteen. That's with shock assault included. Yeah, that's shock assault and scoot. Uh, so you get plus one to hit. So you're hitting on twos. Yeah. 16 attacks, hitting on twos. Um, exploding sixes. With, uh, triple if, exploding. Yeah, if you're in the assault dark and you get double exploding sixes. So yeah. Each six counts as a three. Um, you use keen senses so to ignore the hit uh, modifiers. So you can guarantee you're hitting on twos if you're uh, against someone that has a minus one or if, we're from some, or if you're hitting with hammers. Mm-hmm. So um, And then you just re-roll everything that's not six. <laughs> yeah. Fish for sixes. Yeah, because if you're already hitting on twos, like it doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> so. I, I, I would consider it a fail if you didn't get more hits than the dice you started with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, should, you should be landing more than 16 hits. Yeah, you yeah. should be going to at least 21. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't. I don't know the ex- exact math behind it, but I know if you hit on twos and you have um, double exploding sixes, you should be fishing for the sixes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. 
Uh, how, how do you interact with people who only look at boogeyman armies? Because I, I find this happening a lot, especially when it comes to armies that are older. A lot of people uh, talk about Codex Creep a lot. Um, I think that there's some arguments with Codex Creep that is viable. I think that some of them are kind of like not viable yeah. <laughs> and just kind of like people kind of just getting butt hurt. Yeah. Um, but how, how do you interact with people who look at Space Wolves and are just like, Oh, they're not a top tier army. They they yeah. they just kind of suck. Yeah, I mean, it's like you don't have to be a top tier army to perform at an LGS, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I, it's the same thing. Like, uh, like I picked up Admech recently, and like I, it's an army that I'm not comfortable with, and I'm not expecting to like just sweep everyone because I have a top tier army now. But mm-hmm. I'm sure man, other people may or may not think that way. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I'm picking up Admech or Jakari. What? Why am I not winning? Um, yeah. But I mean, obviously, first things first. Your the the player skill is what matters, um, mm-hmm. and then plus, I think people look at tournament lists and see that as like or tournament results and see that as like the gospel. Yeah, and they shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you know, um, that's the like the top most performing things you're gonna see. You know, that's what the t- pro players are doing. That's not necessarily how. Um, Tom at like yeah, uh, at, at an LGS, at LGS or, is gonna play like, or yeah. like a, a little Larry yeah like yeah just. young Larry that yeah and these are guys that you know they probably live and breathe Warhammer at those uh, tournaments mm-hmm. and like, well Larry at your LGS probably just plays casually yeah plays yeah. very casually you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but they're if you're not looking getting f- the ropes in yeah but if you're looking for like a GT win you know or like a, a win from your local game store don't look at you know the top armies and be like this is the end all be all yeah. no matter what. Yeah, I I'm going to win with this list now. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to lose that list. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to lose that list only because you'd be surprised how many people don't own top tier armies. Yeah. 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 Especially IRL. Like exactly. I, I think that a lot of stuff um, when it comes to 40 K, I think that's starting to blend a lot because of what happened with COVID where a lot of people were getting reps in for 40 K through tabletop simulator. Exactly. Yeah. And the reps that you're getting in tabletop simulator does not translate at all to IRL nope. uh, mm-hmm. uh, 40 K because tabletop simulator, you're going to go up against like buggy spam very easily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you're going to be going up against like <laughs> Fusilov spam. Yeah. Uh, yep. You go to an IRL uh, uh, LGS and you're just like, Oh, there's no Fuselovs. Oh, yeah. oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, this is just what I own, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I think Castle and Robots are cool, so I brought yeah. a bunch of Castle and Robots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you'll find some jank stuff. Yeah. Like uh, even if you look at Naden's uh, list for Harlequins, uh, souped with like Craft Worlds, mm-hmm. that's a fun list. Yeah, and like it's something that's completely different. Um, it's just not it's not like top tier, but it's performs well because the player is good obviously. yeah because the player is good and they're comfortable with it i yeah. think that's that's the the biggest thing is like are you comfortable with the army yes you'll probably do pretty well with it yeah yeah you'll do fine yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean as long as you if you feel good you play good if you don't feel good if you don't feel good go home, <laughs> go home. you're probably sick yeah. go, go get ice yeah, cream go go yeah. go see the doctor yeah <laughs> uh is there anything else that you guys want to add on to this uh yeah I could talk about space wolves for hours. <laughs> give me, give me, give me a fun fact about space wolves. Fun fact about space wolves. Uh, <laughs> putting you on the Logan spot. Grimnar <laughs> is one of the few men that has sprinted in Terminator army. Terminator armor. This is the truth. This is the truth. Yeah. This is the way. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Make. Do you have anything else you want to add? Um, Looper cow. Wait, that's not Space Wolves. Uh, that's <laughs> Luna Wolves. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that we're done here. Yeah. Uh, that is it for this episode. I feel like that. Do you guys want to do the next episode where we talk about like the the the, the units that were good in the oh, beginning at of the, the year? Yeah, and that would be good. Bad. I think yeah, yeah. Yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you remember this fun. thing called the Indominus box set? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Blade Guard vets are still good. Yeah, like, yeah Blood, Blade Guard vets. Are yeah, good. Bloody Angels yeah. love their Blade Guard vets. Yeah, yeah and their Vanguard vets. Yeah, that's starting right. to spoil the episode, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so if you guys like this episode, make sure you guys press the subscribe button, and press the like button. If you guys have any other tips as well for Space Wolves players, please leave them in the comment section so that we can also help out other people that want to learn more about Space Wolves or just uh, how you guys deal with uh, not being, uh, you know, not being the newest codex that's out or 
how you guys deal with punching upwards at different armies. Not don't 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 leave a comment that's just like, hey, here's how you fight uh, good armies. <laughs> you buy a good army. <laughs> don't, like, don't, like, don't don't do a cop out statement. You guys, <laughs> come on, guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys for <laughs> for listening and for watching. Uh, we will see you guys next time. You guys have a good night. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. We love you. Bye bye.